You rush to Melanie's side. The moment you reach her, you notice something strange. Melanie's transformed into a monster. Just then, Winifred and the others return from their search of the area. It seems the emergency stores of Dragon Tear kept in the altar were all dashed upon the ground during your battle with Sherwin. Despair buckles your knees. You've lost Melanie and any hope of changing Mar back. Winifred slips something into your hand. You hold it up and see the empty vial of Dragon Tear that Sherwin drank. But if you squint, you can make out one last drop in the bottom. You got a vial of dragon tear from Winifred. The world cut off from its supply of medicine with the dragon's death. Your twin for whom you have searched high and low for some way of restoring her human form. And Melanie, transformed into a monster and lying prone before your very eyes. You must decide for which purpose to put the all-powerful Dragon Tear. Oh, think long and hard about this one. You tip the dragon tear over Melanie's prone form. Melanie turns back into a human. When she learns you used the Dragon Tear on her, Melanie asks you why you didn't choose Mar. You shouldn't have used the last Dragon Tear on me, she sobs. After escaping the mausoleum, you take Melanie and Mar with you on another sojourn round the realm. Melanie is as unforgiving toward you as always, but grows especially tender in taking care of Mar. Deep, deep down, she feels guilty that only she returned to normal. Afterwards, news of the dragon's imprisonment at the hands of the Ivory Order and the medicine they forced him to make spreads like wildfire. A rash of skirmishes breaks out over the increasingly rarer medicine that is the dragon's legacy. Chaos envelops the realm. You tip the dragon tear over Mar.
Mar turns back into a human. You rush to her side and give her the biggest bear hug in the history of bear hugs. The monstrous Melanie looks on with a vacant stare. After escaping the mausoleum, you take Melanie and Mar with you on another sojourn round the realm. Perhaps due to the length of time she spent as a monster, Mar has trouble speaking. The only thing that hasn't changed is her appetite. Melanie, on the other hand, follows the two of you everywhere you go, in total silence. You think she can understand your conversations, but you aren't sure how much of Melanie is really left inside the monster. Afterwards, news of the dragon's imprisonment at the hands of the Ivory Order and the medicine they forced him to make spreads like wildfire. A rash of skirmishes breaks out over the increasingly rarer medicine that is the dragon's legacy. Chaos envelops the realm. Wishing for the dragon's revival, you head toward the volcano. At the peak of the volcano, you tip the dragon tear into the roiling lava. The dragon comes back to life. You sacrificed your own kin and comrades to help me? He asks softly, foolish human. He launches into the sky. You watch him fly away into the distance. After escaping the mausoleum, you take Melanie and Mar with you on another sojourn round the realm. You hope, one day, to find more Dragon Tear and turn them both human again. Afterwards, your reputation grows, not as a bounty hunter, but as a monster whisperer, thanks to your two companions. It's not exactly how you envisioned getting famous. But that is a tale for another time. As though you were trying to cling to something, you offer up every supplication to the Dragon Tear. And then... Dragon Tears light overwhelms you. You feel your consciousness start to slip away. Where's that voice coming from? Wake up, screams Riddus, shaking you ungently. Your eyes peel open, and you glance around.
You're alive, says Melanie through flowing tears. You let go of a heavy sigh of relief to see she's human again. Bruno says you collapsed after the dragon tears started shining with fierce light and that you've been unconscious ever since. That's when you realize Mar is nowhere to be seen. You wrap Mar, returned to human, in your firm embrace. Thus your journey drew to its conclusion. As for the story afterward, you return to Advent Castle and make your report of the events to Queen Nilla. She rewards you handsomely for telling her the truth about the dragon, but it's barely enough to cover the cost of repairs to Riddus's home. Bruno returns to the coastal village he calls home, still squabbling with Oreo. The dragon agrees to continue providing dragon tear for the kingdom, so long as he can live the rest of his life in peace and quiet. Queen Nella denounces the Ivory Order for their cruelty and seizes control of medicinal production. She does all she can to ensure a more ethical manufacturing process. Winifred, Hedwin, and Berwin leave the Ivory Order, establishing a new organization to help the needy. And what of you, Ma and Melanie? Queen Nilla asks you to serve in her court, but that's not really something the three of you are cut out for. You decline to set off for new adventures. And to this day, the incessant bickering of the bounty hunting twins and the Black Witch can be heard in various far-flung corners the world over. This is a story, a story of long, long ago, and long, long from now.